Welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports. Here with Greg Emerson. I had to bring Greg back because you know what I mean. Uh, you know, if you watch, you watch your money. You watched last week's episode of Mainly Motorsports. You saw the little friendly wager that we put on the table at the end. Yeah. You picked your top three. You I picked, picked my yours. top three. Right. Yep. Well, what was the total scores, Greg? The totals were you twenty-one, me fifty-three. Twenty-one to fifty-three. Yeah. Right. It 21. didn't help that two of my cars were involved in, in the, the, the Talladega, big <laughs> the, the big one on the front stretch the big of one Dietrich. On, but yeah. if nothing else, when the guy can pick the winner, right? Well, I'll give you credit. You, but you know, I will say this too: you had first pick, so. Well, you w- let me ask you a question. I would have picked Lonnie. You wouldn't have picked Lonnie. <laughs> yes, Listen, I would have. Don't come on my show <laughs> and my set and lie to me. <laughs> I'm not lying. I would have picked Lonnie. You wouldn't have picked Lonnie. Yeah, you I didn't even know Lonnie. You need, when I said Lonnie Somerville, you said who? No, I didn't. Right. <laughs> and uh, when we got down, I got down on the track right after, and I met Lonnie and Victor Lane. You know, the first thing Lonnie said. I made you money, bro. Yeah. Made, yeah, I made you some money. And uh, it was pretty cool because uh, Vicky, Vicky Mulkern, her and Scott obviously own yeah. that team. Uh, she posted on their fan page for Mulkern Racing that, uh, you know, Steve from Manly Motorsports picked Lonnie, Lonnie Somerville to win. to win the race. You know, so now I'm at the track and I got guys from that team saying, hey, you know, you picked us. Thanks. I'm like, hey, right. you know, I don't know if that's. Well, you know, we got to congratulate Mulkern Racing for one because they. Got some good guys. They're all good guys on that team. I know a few of them, you know, personally yeah. and stuff like that. And, you know, and congratulations to Scott and Vicky Mulker. And, I mean, they've put another pass team out there, and yeah. they're successful with it, just like they were last year and the year before. You, you know, know and, and what was neat is, uh, you know, sponsored, you know, McKay Builders, obviously, yeah. uh, Community Pharmacies, yep. but also SouthernMainMotors.com. Yeah, that was perfect uh, for the race. And, you know, they're obviously one of our sponsors. Yep. You see them on the screen. And so that was a pretty big deal for them to, you know, to sponsor the race, sponsor the there. car that wins the race, and, uh, you know, and sponsor this show. So, uh, you know, I appreciate them. And, you know, but it was good. Five bucks. I mean, you got my five bucks because I'm going to get a Kit Kat Blizzard this week from uh, the Dairy Queen here. The local Dairy it's Queen. On, what? It's on film. I paid you. Yeah, yeah I'm paid. So Are we doing a bet for Le- Lee no, Tuesday night? No, no. But listen, five dollars, right? Now, I'm glad we're not in school, high school or anything. You know why? I don't know. Why? They'd haul me in the office because this is probably considered a form of bullying. <laughs> right? I've taken, my, you're taking your lunch money two weeks in a row. Hmm. So we'll, we're going to take a week off this week. Next week we're going to come back with the pass race at uh, Oxford on Saturday night and then the 250 Sunday. Yep. So, yeah, that's uh, – thank you for coming clean on the bat, but uh, I knew you would. But it was a great night of racing overall at, at, over at Beach Ridge. It was. It was a good night like it always is. We ran 150, and, I mean, other than the red flag scenario, it went pretty uncharacteristically less, you know, there wasn't a lot of caution. It's too stuff. bad because lap 30. I don't want to say ruin the race. I don't want to take nothing away from Marty Somerville and his team. No, I, he, he was he the was, best cow. Yeah. The best cow won that race. Yeah. Even Ben Rowe said the best cow won that race. But, you know, there would have been a nice little battle going on for the third through it tenth, was, second through tenth area. And the, it was, I think it was, was it lap 30 or lap 36? No, they, I think it was lap 30. They had uh, a big empire pile up. You know, there's a lot, on the lot going on. So. He said, she said, he heard, she heard, you know, whether the green was called, you know, because past calls the green. Right. You know, whatever, it's over, it's done with. It the, happens, it's racing. The, the point of the deal is a lot of good race cars it's got torn up. one of those up. racing deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of good race cars got yeah, torn yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, stunk. I mean, there was a lot of good race cars, a lot of guys who were contenders for a top three, a top five, you know. I mean, listen to the name of the people that were in this wreck. I mean, there was Scott Mulkern, Chris Thorne, Aaron Ricca, DJ Shaw. David Oliver, Donnie Witten, Billy Rogers, Travis Benjamin, Derek Randstrom, Bill Penfold. Yeah, that's some heavy. There's some heavy hitters right yeah. there. Yeah, you know, and I mean, uh, any I mean, of those guys could have had a. Travis Benjamin went flying through the air. You know, yeah. and you know, just, it, it's too bad. It's unfortunate. You know, especially with the short week and yeah. three days later going to league. 
you know, and I already heard, and I and I don't want to speculate because I could say something, and you'll watch the show Wednesday night and go, what do you mean? He said the guy wasn't going, he ended up winning the race. So I'm not saying who said it wasn't going or is going, right. but I heard from a lot of people in the pits after that they had intentions of going to Lee, they ain't no, going to Lee. No. You know, they're torn up, so. That's too bad. I mean, it, this this is the pass's tough stretch right here. I mean, we got... We just had Beechridge. Got Lee. We got Lee on a Tuesday night. And we got Oxford. Then you got Oxford. You got Thompson. You got Thompson on a Thursday you night. Got Thompson before Oxford. Thompson so. before Oxford. So I mean, this it's a stretch. Separates the men from the boys. Right. Similar to me and you. Well, I I'm happy to be a man. So. Yeah. <laughs> six bucks is six bucks in the hole. Well, we got to up the ante, baby. We, we will. Going. I'll double or nothing on yeah, my we, six bucks know, and then I'll lose. at some point. One week, I'll have a bad week. Right. But well. but uh, we got a great show planned today, Greg. Obviously, we got highlights of uh, all the divisions in action at Beatridge, yep. you know, including the past 150, the southernmainmotors.com race. Yeah. Uh, Kevin from Renegade Networks up there at Unity does a great job with George. George does a great job. He's a hands-on promoter, uh, you know, wears his hat on his sleeve, as we all know, and uh, really is trying to take that track back to its heyday. So right, yep. uh, all you Unity fans, you know, mark on your calendar if you pick and choose which races you go to. August 6th, the Mainly Motorsports gang will be in attendance. They're going to do beach rama We're doing the hula hoop contest. I am practicing the hula hoop. Right, I will be on the front stretch at Unity Raceway doing the hula hoop. So, and I'll be bringing some hula hooping girls with me, as you see in this photo that uh, Chris Roy took at uh, me at the go karts. You know, a couple of babes go. hanging off the mainly motorsports some hula guy. Hooping girls. So I'll have these hula hooping girls on the front stretch with me August six. So Lee from Four Seasons Synthetic is uh, worked a deal with George through you know uh, the money we raised for the American Cancer Society up at my show in, in Augusta yeah. Northeast Motorsports Expo. So Lee will be presenting the trophies and nice hardware for all those guys up at Unity. So you know it's it's marking on your calendar to come up. I've already seen on mainracing.com and that's that's like the bible of motorsports, right? Because no. every every know-how, every knowledgeable person, anybody who knows anything about racing goes on there, right? No. Am I right? Oh, there, I know. There's a lot of people that go on there. I'm, I wouldn't give them as much credit as you do. You didn't pick up on the sarcasm there? Yeah, I did. Okay. But. There's been a formal invitation to Andy B. and Mike Harnish, who George and Mike Harnish have had some issues a couple in the past years, you know? Those, so, are, those are three very opinionated people. Yeah. I mean, and everybody's, you know, yeah. allowed their opinion. George has invited them to come up. As a special guest, if they show up, George will donate money to a worthy cause in their honor and in their name. So, uh, that's George. That that shows you the kind of guy George is. Yeah. You know. So maybe, maybe he's gonna have a wrestling ring hidden underneath a top or something. No, but. George. George is the new George, yeah. and uh, you know, so he sits up in the VIP booth and you know, and just kind of mellows out. So I'm sure if old Andy B shows up on the premises, premises, old George's gonna. You're going to amp up a little bit, you know, right, but, you know, right. Andy, Andy B, you can say what you want, and I know he says a lot of things that aren't right, and I, I'm not going to stick up I, for him. I'm not going to stick up for him. But the guy either. is knowledgeable. He, he is. He goes to some racetracks, and a lot of what he says is true. Yes. Sometimes he goes above the call and gets a little personal. Right. But, yes. you know, it is true. Um, so I, I can't knock that. So, but, you know, so August 6th going to be a great time. we got some highlights today on the show. Um what a great weekend we had go-kart. And it's just being with the family is what yeah. it's all about. And, uh, you know, my kid got it done yesterday. She, uh, you know, on Saturday got the win. Now, she got it done Saturday at RKS. Where were you? I was there. You, would you go to Beatridge after that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I was going to be like, that's why she won. You weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get it. So uh, there's a picture of her holding the flag there in uh, Victory Lane. So runs unrestricted. I can't wait till DJ and Joey Dwyer and all yeah. those guys show up. She loves racing with those guys. You know, you, you, you know, she you learn with them indoors. Yeah, so, yeah, you learn from racing the best. And then Sunday, same thing. She was letting her eat, and she had uh, she had to start at the back because winning Saturday, and she worked her way to the front, and then all of a sudden they had a restart. You know, halfway mark, and something happened in the motor. Something stupid. You know, yeah. out of my control. You know, so. But, uh, you know, I got to thank her sponsors. And, you know, we got Billy Penfold from Oxford Auto Salvage. So yeah. there's the beef. She's the beauty. There's the beef, <laughs> right? Billy always said, you got any issues, 
I'll come up. I said, Billy, they're 12, 13 year old kids. Well, they got parents. Right. I said, Yeah, you're right, Billy. You know, and then she's got a couple of family friends, size, uh, size auto repair, mainly stoves, and uh, Planet Fitness right in Brunswick. So that's something me and Greg probably never been to. And, I know, haven't been to Planet Fitness. No. You know, so a friend of mine owns a Planet Fitness in Brunswick. So check them they out. Fine facilities. Though. And then Blow Brothers, you know, Archie, Go Green Racing. So maybe, yeah. maybe I'm grooming her for Archie's ride down the road in the maybe. Nationwide Series, huh? That could be a good thing. Yeah, so no, it was great. So we got Chris, Chris Roy was there, got some highlights, and we're going to show some pictures from there. So should be a pretty good show today, Greg. Yeah. I mean, uh, Beechridge was where I was at. I picked up a side job this weekend, which I'd like to thank uh, the whole 24 team and Mike Rowe and Carol and those guys for letting me spot for Mike this weekend. It was a experience. and Boy, things aren't... Just something, you know, because he got tied up in yeah, a wreck he got in the heat. Tied up in a wreck in the heat, and then they they fought. They did a good job in the car back yeah. together. And it was funny. I was talking to Ben, and Ben says, "Man, this is Derek Ransom because you know Mike and him and Derek have had issues in the yeah, past, you yeah. know, racing issues." And uh, Derek spun Billy, yeah, Penfold in the heat, he got cocked around. Mike said he saw him coming. He put the coal to it and yeah. tried to get by. Tried to get him. They made contact. Mike got on the wall, so. Where do you think Mike and Billy were headed right after that heat? After that little <laughs> ransom kit. Man, you imagine those two coming? No. But it's tough. It's, you know, and then obviously Mike's been struggling this year. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's just. It's... I think they, they think I did a good job. They invited me to do it at uh, Lee on the 12th and then at down to Thompson. So. Well, there you go. So, I mean, it's fun. It's it's nice to work with different people once in a while and, and, and spread yourself out a little bit. I mean, my heart and soul is with the 40 boys, but. It's still yep. fun. It's it's back to fun racing at times instead of nose oh, to the grindstone. You yeah. Know? So we got spotter extraordinaire right on site. No, yeah. no that's not. it's good though. It it is fun. You know. I don't claim to be a spotter extraordinaire, but it is fun, and I like doing that type of stuff with people I can. Yeah. So we're gonna take a break. When we come back. Uh, we'll have some highlights from Unity, and you know, get everybody amped up for the August sixth appearance of the Mainly Motorsports Gang. The Hula Hoop Gang. The Hula Hoop Gang, baby. We'll be right back. Five years ago, I went shopping for my family's first camper. I didn't like the prices, and I didn't like the way I was treated. A year later, I opened up Scott's Recreation. Today, Scott's Recreation is Maine's exclusive multi-line Heartland dealer, along with being Maine's number one fifth wheel dealer two years in a row. Browse through the new 2012 Heartland models or take advantage of closeout prices on 2011s. Scott's welcomes almost anything in trade, financing available too. Scott's Recreation, Route 202 in Manchester, and their new Turner location on Route 4. All of us at Moody's Collision Centers would like to thank you for supporting us for over 30 years. We all own stock in Moody's and have a vested interest in you and your vehicle. The people at Moody's Collision Centers are part of the community and our reputation is very important to us. We take pride in our work and guarantee our repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. At Moody's Collision Center, we care about our customers. So when your insurance company asks where you want to go, tell them Moody's, Moody's Collision, Collision Centers. Centers. Four convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, and now Portland. Are you Bob Crowley? Hey, yeah. Are you going to Ossipy Trail? Yes, I am. Sweet. Get in. People will do whatever they gotta do to get to Ossipy Trail Motor Sales, Route 25, Gorham. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Southern Maine Motors, out to be Maine's number one Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep dealership. Well, Greg, like I mentioned in the opening segment, Kevin Minacci out of uh, the Renegade Networks, every week he's up to Unity, big television production, and got highlights, and then the people that are not at the races can streamline and follow along at home, right, so it's, yeah. uh, it's pretty neat, and then, you know, he sends us down some stuff, and we're not able to get everywhere, so I really appreciate it. the information it. age, and he's yep. doing his part. Yeah, you know, to try to help out the show and right, give Unity yeah. their plug, so enjoy these highlights, and after these highlights, uh, we'll come back with the photos of the winners from this past weekend's race at Unity. Perfect. Go. Go, go, green flag. Go, go. You are clear. You're clear. And hey, welcome to the Monster Minis, everyone. Oh, you're here in the, oh, you're here in the 51 car right now in second place. 
As we continue with the heat, we got the, uh, the, the radio on, the dialed into the 51. The racing Mike Mason will listen in. Will listen in here. Outside, outside, outside. Being nervous. You're all clear. I guess. Zach is hitting you a little bit, but see right there, you pull right away from him. You're gone. You got four colleagues. Driver in line, see if it pushes. Now for a Sunday drive, the 51 car, way out in front. Yeah, hey, let her go. Zach got in, the 19, the closest one to him. He almost got a quarter lap on the whole field. And here they go, Sleeper with a quick start. Green flag is out, side by side around turn two. Sleeper out in front. The 22. Trying to make his way around the outside as Sleeper, 29, takes the position from him. The 29 comes around the back stretch in first place. Sleeper working the outside. Look out right there, Michael Wilson making her way to the front. She's in the second spot, going around in the prelude. Now well, Michael once again got a nice car. Slides around, turn four, turn start finish. Michael Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, still uh, holding on to that second spot. Look at the 09 wheeling his way around Robinson to the inside. The 09 moving up to the third spot. Now he takes the he second spot. He slams off the 9 1. Whoa, we got a crash right there. Up and over is Donnie Silver and uh, Kyle well, Robinson. Driving the fenders right off it. And Michael Wilson in second place trying to hang on to that thing. And look further back in the pack. The truck stepped in and sliding, almost losing it there. Gathers it back in and he's on Robinson the way. and Wilson, this is a race for second here, people. Michael Wilson doing a fantastic job of blocking Robinson. One more corner to go as they come around three and four, headed towards the front stretch. Wilson in second, Robinson on the bumper. And the Deuce gonna make a big strong showing on the outside. It's the Deuce and Robinson as they come around the back stretch. The Deuce now to the outside, trying to get around Robinson. Number one, the X car Burgess out front so far. Burgess now to the inside. He's hanging Folsom on. Folsom to the inside, making it three wide. Turner trying to get around Folsom. He's right on the back bumper. Here's Burgess, and they're going to go side by side. Folsom now to the inside of Burgess. Folsom and Burgess, this is for second and third place. They go side by side. Folsom gets into him a little bit. As we get it on. They got the 56 making his way. That's Jackson on the outside. Looks like a pretty fast car. He gets into the dirt a little bit. He's gonna be slowed up there. 38 out in front, here they come. Tell you what, Justin Moore making a way right there. 38 still out in front, Tim Robinson. Further back in the pack, we have a battle right there between Inferno and the 25 car. As they run in the back, the spin out on the 56. Jackson's got to take his turn on the infield. Tim Robinson. And the wheelman of the year on the Renegade Network in the third spot. We've got action there, back. Oh, they went three wide in the turn three, and Robinson ping-pong between two different cars, and now he ends up in second place. Car. 
Well, that 91 of Fernald, he's uh, having a lot of trouble here. The car slows up. Look out there. We got the cars around into the safer barrier, you could say, the uh, sand dune. Right there is the 26 car. 51, Jason Bosworth, he's going to come around with the early lead. Look at the battle right there between the 20 and the 88. He's on the inside of Turner. He's now taking the spot. Turner battling on the outside. And Bosworth has set sail. He's in a new zip code. He's to the inside of Mount Calpine. Uh, looking at Austin Clemens right there, trying to take the third spot away. Clemens to the outside. Clemens looks to the inside again. Clemens trying to hold. Tell you what, that is a battle. They're side by side for second place right now. Clemens has it. Look at Ricky Pease closing the gap on McAlpine. Pease dives to the inside. And he slides up. Pease now hanging on to that. Clemens got a pretty good car right now handling well. Bosworth in first, Clemens in second. Here they come around turn three, one and two. The white flag is out. Clemens now battling with Bosworth in the end. Clemens hammered it down. Clemens one more shot around. And it's going to make the turn right now around turn three. Clemens is not going to do it here tonight. Ryan Bosworth, your winner, Team Thunder Unity Raceway. The late model winner there, the number 75 of David Folsom the second. They call him Deuce, and uh, anybody that saw the cars at the show, the, the Folsom cars were at Unity as, at the Northeast Motorsports Expo as well as the racing paper preview show. You know, really nice looking stuff. You know, they were a very yep. part, big part of uh, yep. George's display. And then the Nelcar Legends made a visit up to Unity this past week. And uh, Bobby Weymouth in the 399 brought home the win. Like Bobby Weymouth, he's always got the hand out the window. Yep. Like he's out for a Sunday ride, man. He's got the three-digit number because he's uh, the king, I the guess. The king, I, I guess. Know. <laughs> then, you know, over in the Monster Mini, Randy Turner from Unity picked up the win, beat uh, Pete McCullough, so, you know, good job by him. And then uh, in the Race and Paper Super Street Division, Nate, the sleeper, Weston, come home with the win. That's a nickname that I like to call him because he always sneaks up from the back usually. Sneaks up. And then uh, the Keystone Automotive uh, Wildcat Division, Kyle McAlpine. And, you know, my favorite Kyle McAlpine story is one time when we went up there and a uh, former co-host used to call it the Land Yard. I was using Pettit's Motorhome and 38 <laughs> footer with my mainly motorsports trailer. And I don't know, watching TV, killed the batteries and uh, out there in Kyle McAlpine just broke an axle on the 75 lapper up there and had it won. And, uh, but he come to my rescue and had some jumper cables out there having a little snack and yeah. he uh, come out and jumped the, the, jumped the land yacht so we could head home, you know. Okay. So Kyle McAlpine, great job. And then uh, in the Uncle Henry's late model, Pro 4, uh, the winner was Lance Chapman. Yeah, so good job to Lance. Flying four is Cole Robinson, a lot of young fellas up there, you know, getting their feet wet in the racing division. And then in the Challenger 20 lap race, it was Chad Folsom out of Skowhegan. Now the, now the Folsom. And then the Teen Thunder Division, you know, the Jason Bosworth. And, you know, a lot of these tracks starting, you know, Beechwood's got the Whiz Kids, Oxford's got some stuff. A lot stuff. of them have teen stuff going now. Teen stuff going. So uh, that's good. That's how you break the kids in. That's why they're better racers. And, right. You and know, now than they, you know, than the, the last generation, you know. George. You know, appears to be having healthy fields, and he's got a bunch of divisions. Puts on a heck of a program. And you're going to have me in a hula hoop. You're going to have you in a hula hoop. Yeah, eating. The, and I don't know, because last year I went up at the end of the year, and he had these French fried chips or something. They were good. George got me a big box of them. So, George, you know, if you're watching, if you're listening, make sure, you know, you tell your girls at the snack bar, you know, the big guy, you know, take you care know, of them. One of my favorite parts about going to Unity is... It seems like they always got some time, kind, yeah, excuse me, some kind of concoction in the crock pot in the pit food concession. So you never know what you're going to get. Some chop suey, uh -huh. some beans and hot dogs, something. But it's always hot food. I mean, usually if we race up there, it's one of the late season deals, so it's cool out. So yeah, so that's one of my... You know, all you fans of Unity Raceway, make sure you come up on, you know... August, August 6th. Yeah, yeah, August 6th. Say hi to us. We're going to try to do some other stuff and, you know, have some fun that night. And the racers are going to be happy with the hardware that Lee Lee's is, gonna bring is, in, is yeah. bringing up. So it's going to be a great time. So 
August 6th, the Mainly Motorsports Gang be at the beach Yeah, you'll be there. I won't be able to be there. No, but, but I'll be there, and we'll, we'll come back with some highlights. Yeah, that'll be good. Good All show. Right, good show. So we'll be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Clark's Car Crushing has been a family-owned and operated business since 1978. We do everything from crushing cars, handling industrial scraps, to buying the scrap metal right out of the back of your pickup. Copper, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, you name it, we'll buy it. We have roll-off containers of all sizes for industrial accounts. We'll handle the legwork with full drop-off and pickup services. So for a professional job, guaranteed honest weights, and top dollar paid statewide, come see the Clark family in Farmingdale, Maine. Clark's Car Crushing. Don't fix it, scrap it. All of us at Moody's Collision Centers would like to thank you for supporting us for over 30 years. We all own stock in Moody's and have a vested interest in you and your vehicle. The people at Moody's Collision Centers are part of the community and our reputation is very important to us. We take pride in our work and guarantee our repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. At Moody's Collision Center, we care about our customers. So when your insurance company asks where you want to go, tell them Moody's, Moody's Collision, Collision Centers. Centers. Four convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, and now Portland. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Now at three convenient locations. Go to scottsrecreation.com to view our inventory. Award Champs, the official award supplier of Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check or money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. You know, the thing I always liked, Greg, back when I raced in the old days when they, the tours would come to town, whether it was the old act or the bush tour or whatever, yeah. was being on the undercard, but racing in front of the big crowd. And not only that, racing in front of the other drivers. I remember once I ran a super sportsman and uh, had a great race with, with Kerry Martin, photo finish, and going in the pits and after, you know, just hanging out in the pits, you know, people congratulate me and say, wow, it was only like your fourth race in the car. Right, and, yeah. uh, you know, there we are, and Andy Santier comes looking for me. Somebody says, oh, he's over there, Andy can go and say, I want to introduce myself, and Andy Santier, time he was driving to O'Connor, and he was on the bush tour, he right, says, yeah. you know, hey, that was a heck of a run, man. that was fun to watch, you did a great job. You don't have a lot of experience with that guy, you know, so it's neat. So I'm sure these guys, you know, like in the Roadrunner division, you see some highlights of right now. They get uh, excited about the path, right? Yeah, right, racing in front of those guys, and, you know, for a class that, you know, Took their beat like a man last week, and even the four girls took their beat like men, you know? Right. Uh, they've really, 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 in the last two weeks, have put on a good race. You yeah. know? And, and what a fitting, uh, you know, how fitting it was for the winner to be Dave Cameron, one of the guys that, that got spanked last week, yeah. spanked the hottest. He, he got sent home for some past actions. Yeah. Took a week off. And you know what? Took it like a man, came back. You got, we got an interview with Dave, yep. you know, after. And you're going to see, you know, with some highlights. And I'll tell you, the guy really took it, and, and he was. That, that's the way you like to see somebody handle it. So yep. congratulations to Dave Cameron, and you know, hear what he has to say about how his thing went on week one after the suspension. All right, here with Roadrunner winner Dave Cameron, and uh, I mean, it's no secret. Last week. You got punished. I got I punished. Mean, yes, I did. Suspended, which is usually unheard of on a Saturday night track. Yes. You were shut down for the week, had a week to think about things, yes. and you came back with a vengeance and, and probably drove one of the best races you've ever driven. Yeah, so the guy was really, really good tonight. I mean, uh, we, it, me and the crew put a little extra time in today before we got to the track and put a, really make sure it was ready before we got to the track because, we were, because of what happened last week. It was fantastic. And the guy couldn't ask for a better car on the racetrack at all tonight. Yeah, no, and you drove a tremendous race. You were very patient. Picked your spot. You knew you got to be patient now. You know what I mean? You picked your spots, and uh, you're standing in victory lane, and, you know, the hardware, the trophy, and a little bit of uh, vengeance, so to speak. Exactly. I, I talked to the track owner this evening. He said, that's the way to come back, a little poetic justice for yourself. He uh, congratulated me, gave me a hug. He said, I was very proud. He was very proud of the way I drove the car. The car was absolutely fantastic. There's no such chassis race car. It's the best race car I've ever driven.
Yeah, no, and you talked about the no such guy, chassis guys, and uh, they are a great bunch of guys. And I mean, with you, Ryan Phillips, and then Matt Dow in the sports series, I mean, they got their stuff together. We really seem to have the, the cars figured out perfectly. We get to the racetrack, we really have our stuff together. It's, it's, you couldn't ask for a better car. I mean, the ra this race car here is owned by the no such chassis racing operation. It's a whole group of people who have got a little bit of something into the car that gets us to the racetrack every week. All right, well, congratulations, Dave, and a way to come back. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. Now that brings us to what I consider the toughest division in the state. Yeah, the, the sports series. The sports series is a tough division, and you know, a lot of guys the other night were complaining they were sliding around because the track was slick. But Donnie Culprit, point leader, had a rough night. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, they, you know he isn't finished. You know he had a the week before he didn't have a good run, but it was more so just circumstances. You know he had right. a good car, just boxed in. But uh, this night, he didn't have a good run. He had yeah. some contact, and, you know. He was in the top five, I believe, when it happened. Well, he was on his way to the top five. Right. Him and him and uh, eventual winner, Corey, Corey Bubar, Bubar, you know. and uh, So it was it was a good race. and Yeah, and they came from the back. There was, you know, the guys came from the back that, that normally do, and you got to give them credit. Speaking of coming from the back, I mean, obviously, uh, Brandon Ingalls, second top five run. Yeah. And, and, and Brandon's, you know, he's taken a lot of heat the last few yeah. years, you know, jumped from the whiz kid division and, you know, his car owner, Jim Bim, put a, you know, he's got a real good piece under him and Brandon just had to learn how to drive it. And right, I'm not yeah. saying anything about that, but you know what? Brandon has learned how to drive it. He's, he's improved and he's showing it and, you know, we're enjoying watching it. So. Yeah. So, you know, so why don't you, uh, you know, enjoy the listening to Brandon's take on his last two weeks. Yeah. Matt Dow, and you know, after backing up a win, coming from shotgun on the field to a top five finish, Laura, she had bragging rights for the Naughty Forty Gang. Yeah. And listen to what Laura has to say because Laura's a good looking woman. You know what I mean? She's yeah. a good looking woman. She needs a new fire suit, and that's what we talk about. Okay. <laughs> so really, get on Dan's case and rattle him about this new fire suit that Laura needs that Sally has. All right. <laughs> and then the winner, Little Booba. I love to call him Little Booba. You know, and the kid is he's. He's coming. Yeah, and I got to give a shout out to Danny and the rest of the gang over there because if a lot of people know that they got tore up pretty bad yep. last week. I mean, they had to clip the car the whole nine yards, and they had like 125 man hours in the thing I heard, and, yep. and back together and comes. He was still up there and started near the tail of the field and came to the front and yep. ended up winning it. So listen to what these four have to say about there. Eventful, uneventful. Enjoy the interview. Night. All right, Brandon, this is your fourth year in this class, and we all know the struggles that you had. I mean, this is a big jump from whiz kids to this, but, man, these last two weeks you've run at the front, lead laps. What a confidence boost, huh? Oh, yeah. It's going a lot better. Yeah. Now, uh, what's been the, the difference? I mean, you ran good towards the end of last year, but this year, I mean, you as a driver have stepped up because, obviously, you know, your car owner, Jim Bims, always had good stuff behind you. Terry Merrill's taking this out in practice, turned some of the fastest laps in this class. But what's been the difference for you as a driver in 2011? Uh, just experience. Uh, we got the car going better, and I'm more comfortable. Yeah, and, that's, and I, I noticed that last week. You as a driver look comfortable. You know, in years past, you'd be up there, and when somebody raced around you, you'd almost give up. And I'm not saying give up, but you were like, you were afraid for that contact, afraid to make a mistake and, and cost you or somebody else. Now you're not afraid. Now the confidence is there that you're not going to make that mistake. You're going to succeed in the pass or you're going to succeed in holding them off. Yeah, it's, I'm a lot more comfortable, I guess. Yeah, and it's two top fives in two weeks, so uh, the wind's just around the corner, man. I hope so. All right, good job. Thanks. All right, Matt, last week you won, but, you know, I know that impressed you and you were happy about it. Yeah. But to come from the back, race with the guys you did, race to the front with the top three finish tonight. I mean, that's got to mean even more. Yeah, tonight was awesome. I mean, coming from the back with the field that we have, uh, almost as good as a win. I mean, it was a hard battle to the front, and we were able to get it done. So just about meant as much as the win did. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was watching the race about lap 15. There's Corey Buba, Donnie Culprit, yourself, and Sally Girardi coming up the outside. I mean. Corey, we all know what he's done behind the wheel, and then Donnie and Sally, former champions in this class, you know, and then you. So last week had to be a huge confidence boost, and then tonight just adds to what should be a great second half of the season for you. Yeah, I mean, the first part, uh, the first three races, we couldn't get away from any wrecks, and we knew we had a fast car, so 
we're pretty happy these last couple of weeks have been able to actually show what we have and to be able to run with those guys that you mentioned is awesome. Yeah, well congratulations to you and your team and uh, you know, look forward to seeing what the rest of the season brings for you. Thanks, Steve. All right, Matt. All right, I'm here with uh, tonight's bragging rights for Naughty Forty. Every week is bragging rights. You, Dan, Breck, you know, somebody. But Mostly Dan, yeah. Yeah, mostly Dan. But tonight you got the bragging rights. Yep. What a great run to finish top five in the sports series. Yeah, it was great. I I was so excited to just even, I was thinking to myself, I'm going to get a top ten. So top five was even better. It was great. Yeah, now I don't know if we've even got a picture of you in your silly looking fire suit right? right but there are some really nice fire suits out there that I think you deserve and uh, I actually designed one and I'm just waiting 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 for my husband to get that for me well I'll tell you first thing to, to you know what I mean when they say the racer first you got to get in the car and then you run top tens yep. and then you can run top fives yep. okay once you run top five which you did tonight the next step is to win, you know top three and wins right so you can't win out here and come out with an old frumpy looking fire suit I know I've been telling him I I want a new suit we're working on it I mean the other lady in the class Sally's got a really nice looking <laughs> suit with black and pink and stuff I mean it really looks nice and you you deserve that and I mean after the run tonight racing with Matt and Brandon Ingalls at the you know what I mean it's yep. just huge Corey, you gotta be yep. so excited I was very excited and I I want my fire suit all right so anybody that's a friend of Laura's on Facebook or anything just send Dan a message or send somebody a message that says how she deserves this fire suit and maybe they'll, Dan will just take enough grief and he'll get tired yes, of it. I need all my fans out there to to send Steve a message and tell him. All right, send me a message. I'm not paying for it though. I got a no. kid, I got a girl that races already, and you right. guys, girls are more expensive than guys. Oh, we sure are. We we want our stuff, and we want it to look nice. No, no, great job tonight. Thank you. All I'm right. excited. Good job. Thank you. All right, we're here with the winner in tonight's sports series race, which is I consider the toughest class in the state. I call him Little Booba, only because I raced with his dad like 30 years ago. I mean, that's showing our age, but. What a great job tonight, uh, you know, you, you you were patient, and it seems like every time I've been here this year, it's been records or checkers. Last week was no different, tonight's no different. I mean, what was what made today, tonight different for you as a driver? Well, um, we just wrecked last week, so we had to clip it, and um, I just I wanted to come out and win. We had to start way back, and I, I got up to eighth pretty quick, probably before halfway, and I saw the lead, and I, I didn't want to give up. It's, it was fast. It probably wasn't as fast as last week, but it was still fast, and I, was, I wanted to win it. Yeah, and it seems like I've watched some other races, and in some cases, I don't think you showed the patience you needed to show. Tonight, you did. You got to eight. You know, you get into the top ten real quick, and I think you realize then what you could be like a bull in a china closet. And was it, where has it gotten you in the past? You know. So tonight, by being patient, picking your spots, and you're standing in victory lane. Well, that's the difference between this year. This year, I really want to go for a championship and. I want to become a championship driver, being clean and not dumping people and moving everyone. And I got pushed up three wide, and I could have gave up, but I stayed right in it. And I'd like to thank Nate Levitt for that because he could have wrecked me, but I. Yeah. That race is a give and take, you know, and now hopefully this, he'll need you someday to, to give him that break. And as long as it goes back and forth, there's always yeah. success. But there are guys out there, and you know that, that don't matter what you've done for them ten times, they're never going to repay it. Yeah, and uh, that's the thing. I I hope that I race with respect and race clean this year, and I really want to go for the championship. So. All right. Well, great job tonight, Corey. Thanks. Right. Now, Greg, as you see some Wildcat footage, you know your boy Breck. He just he didn't make no headway this week, like yeah, he did. Yeah, the rear and. Yeah. Get but to the front. Tough field. You know what? It's a tough field. I'll tell you, it was one of those races where they didn't really nobody made any headway. No. You know, the guys up front stayed up front, and it took. 20 out of the 30 laps before you know the last 10 laps is where we started seeing some movement you know and yep. and uh you know so then car started getting spread out yeah car that. starts getting spread out and then the guys in the back the ones that had a decent piece for the night you know we're able to move forward and we got a we got a word with two of them dan bean who's actually already picked up two wins in that division and he's right close to the top yep. in the points and then albie Ovit, who yep has run real consistent you Finished know second the other night yeah yep. just missed the championship and First time winner, you know, Sean Gilpatrick. You know, yep. you know, you never have a lot to say, but boy, you know, you could tell. You, you know, it felt good to be out there at happy yeah, half he's hour. Been, he's been right up front a lot of times, and yeah, he always so, has a good going car. So. You know, let's gonna you know and hear from these guys and what they, how the night how went and what, and what they went. think about the rest of the season. Perfect. All right, Dan. Not a win tonight, but a great points night, a great finish. I mean, you have two wins on the season. You won the last race last year. 
I mean, you've really come on as a driver in this 2011 season. Yeah, I feel like I'm actually doing a lot better just as a driver myself. I mean, my car's always been fairly decent. It's going a little bit better this year, but I, I think I'm just improving myself from a driver's perspective. Yeah, and that's what it is. And I just, you know, we've talked to other drivers out here, and, you know, they've always had the car. And, and I, as a, as an owner of cars in the past, I think it's a lot easier to have a good car than to have a, you know, and the driver get accustomed to that good car than it is to have a good driver and try to put a car underneath them. Exactly. I just basically been doing research and setting it up, been nailing the setups and and trying to learn as much as I can driving. You're up towards, towards the front of the point, so you got to be excited about the second half of the season. Yeah, I am. I'm just going to try to keep plugging away at top fives and not necessarily race for the win. All see right. what I can do. Well, congratulations on a great run tonight. Thank you. Now, Albie, you relocated down to Beach Ridge last year, about halfway through the year. Well, no, two years ago. halfway. Yeah. Last year, you, you came into the last day with a shot at the championship, and this year you've picked right up where you left off. I know you don't have a win yet, but uh, you're having those consistent finishes keeping you close to the top of the points. Yeah, we'd, uh, we were struggling the first couple of weeks. Um, we've had a lot of help from a lot of great people um, putting us up front. You know, it's easy to drive when you have people behind you supporting yeah. you. No, you're right, because uh, you're only as good as the car that's under you, and you're only as good as the people that are turning wrenches. So, uh, um, you know, there's guys in the top level now that are proving that. So, you know, great run tonight. You showed tremendous patience coming through the field, because that is a tough class, and it's easy to lose your patience. It, it is, definitely, yeah. Um, you got to be patient. you got to wait for things to thin out. Um, we were aggressive when we needed to be, and uh, it paid off for a second-place finish tonight. Yeah, no, well, congratulations on a runner-up finish, and obviously it helps you in the points. Oh, absolutely. We're trying out the points race, but we're, well, we're climbing up. You're here every week, so your points race. Absolutely. All right, good job, Ellie. Thank you very much. Yep. Here with the winner of tonight's Wildcat race, and uh, first career win, I mean, that's that's a big deal, but yeah. there was a lot of racing going on behind you, but, man, you just checked <laughs> out. You did what you had to do. Yeah. yeah I finally got the set up. I've been finding weather all week. All, you know, all season, finally got to figure it out. Yeah, so <laughs> one thing I noticed is not a lot of sponsors on this car, so you got to have some people behind the behind the scenes that are really helping you out, you know? Yeah, I got my mother and father and stuff helped me out, and a couple of friends of mine helped me out and stuff. But. Yeah, so nothing like that first career win, huh? Yeah, it's nothing like it. It's fun. All right, well, good job, man. Thanks. Thanks. Five years ago, I went shopping for my family's first camper. I didn't like the prices, and I didn't like the way I was treated. A year later, I opened up Scott's Recreation. Today, Scott's Recreation is Maine's exclusive multi-line Heartland dealer, along with being Maine's number one fifth wheel dealer two years in a row. Browse through the new 2012 Heartland models or take advantage of closeout prices on 2011s. Scott's welcomes almost anything in trade, financing available too. Scott's Recreation, Route 202 in Manchester, and our sister company, Holton Power Sports, North Street, Holton. Have a ticket but need a ride? Let VIP take you to the hottest events, including Entertainer of the Year, Taylor Swift, at Gillette Stadium, June 25th and 26th. Or Country Music Superstar and Grammy Award winner, Kenny Chesney, August 27th. And September 25th, don't miss the NASCAR Sylvania Sprint Cup at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Leave the driving to VIP and let VIP take you to the hottest events. Call or reserve online at VIPchartercoaches.com. At Southern Maine Motors, we're celebrating Jeep's 70th anniversary with our spring events. Get the vehicle you want at a price no one else can touch. Like a 2011 Jeep Compass, leased for only $239 a month for 39 months. Or a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee, leased for only $299 a month. Plus, right now, used car values are at an all-time high. Bring in your own vehicle and drive off in a brand new car. With savings this big, it's no wonder Southern Maine Motors is out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealer. Visit SouthernMainMotors.com. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you this week by LKQ. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Route 202, Gorham. Now to the main events. You know, we had over 30 past teams, I believe, in attendance. And, uh, you know, first 15, 20, 30 laps, pretty uneventful, you know, yeah. minus spin. Uh, and Alexander Gingra, who, I'll tell you, the last, you know, this year, he really, he's tried to run some pass races before, he make the show. Right. Now he's part of the show. Not only in yeah. the show, he's yeah. part of the show. You know, the top three at, uh, I think, a runner-up finish to Bennett Kane in last yeah. week. Now he led some laps early, and he had a top. He had a good car. Yeah, a top, yeah, top ten finish, you know. I think he might, I mean, during the day, he was on and stuff like that. And he you know, and here he is, car. racing with Don't Lonnie Somerville early in the race, uh, you know, for the lead. And he was able to hold him off after numerous restarts, and then... What do they call it? All heck broke loose on lap 30. 
there's some of the results of the carnage, you know, uh, cars just, you know, in it, even if it's just cosmetic damage, those bodies are not cheap. You know, no. Aaron Ricker, I mean, I know Aaron obviously Ricker lost, like, DJ Shaw, I mean, Malker, and they had to take him off on two records. Billy Rogers left with a, on a, you know, a flat Billy bed. Billy Rogers left on a flat bed. So and Donnie Witt and the body was gone, you know, the, it just unbelievable. So then, you know, that kind of, it was still a good race. When I say this, don't say, ah, uh, you know, nothing against Lonnie, the best cow won. Yeah. That ruined the race. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's to a third of the field. A third of the field's gone. A third of the, you know, good cars are gone. Now, you know, it set it up, it set the race up for Johnny and, you know, Lonnie and Ben. How ironic. It set it up for only five cars were left on the lead lap at the end of the race. You know, Joey Dwyer running the little engine that could. Pop, yeah. pop, pop, pop. They, that thing started sounding horrible about lap 35. Yeah, you know, and took Matt Farm, great run for the 14. Yeah. Johnny, top three again. But Ben, you know, Ben was doing his best to hold Lonnie off and had not been for you know, catching that lap car on the backstretch, Ricky Moss, I don't know if Lonnie would have been able to, and even Lonnie said it, you know, and you'll hear in Lonnie's interview, you know, how happy he is, for, you know, for the whole Malker and racing team and yeah. his, his great group of guys uh, on picking up that win because it, trust me, it shouldn't have taken this long. And they've had some bad luck. Right. You know, they run, they've been running good, so. They get good you know, equipment. And you know, congratulations to Lonnie. All right, Lonnie, we knew this day would come, and uh, I know you don't get my TV show up in New Brunswick, uh, Canada, but on the last week's show, I predicted that you were going to break through today and win the race. Lo and behold, you won the race. Yeah, I actually caught it on the, in the motel room last night on TV, and uh, Vicky had told me that. Uh, well, I kind of have great great parents from every race this year, and just haven't been able to put it together. We've had some misfortune and some bad luck, and some other things happened, and I uh, you know, figured if, if I didn't, that would have been I need to pay your bet. Yeah, five bucks. I, I only won five bucks, and it ain't going to feed me, but. You're right. I mean, I wouldn't have thought it was going to take this long. And then not just because you've got the team that you got behind you, the finances you got behind you. you got it all. You, you have talent behind the wheel. And uh, this is the Pro All-Star Series. I know you, you came in with high expectations. You didn't think it was uh, I mean, I didn't. I expected our race team to win right off the bat. But obviously, you know, we all know how competitive the series is. And how good Johnny Ben, you know, Travis, everybody is in the division. Coming in with this race team, I, you know, I, knew, I felt I had the ability to do it. I knew the race team was the race team. And, you know, we came out of the box, you know, here, uh, and we were stout. And we could have won that night had the, uh, you know, knocked the box in a little bit and, you know, circumstances. But every race and in, in, in every race car driver has circumstances. When they go home, what should have happened, what could have happened. And uh, we just made it happen tonight. Yeah, you're right. And you mentioned Johnny and Ben. And when you are going to win that first Pro All-Star Series race, you want to beat the best, and you did beat the best. You had to pass Ben for the lead with about 30 to go, and then you checked out after that. Yeah, and, and that's it. I mean, I I drove behind him for a long time, and, and I, I didn't want to use up, you know, what I had. And, and I know this place is hard on tires and hard on, you know, you just get free or tight in, instantly before with no warning. And, uh, you know, I just I knew I was better than him earlier in the race. I mean, I was just I drove up before that first shot with the last caution, and, and you know, I was checking out, and they kept hollering at me, you know, save your stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm half throttle. I'm just rolling in and rolling off. I'm not driving her. So I, I knew right then that we had the car to beat. And, and I was confident all day that our car was good. I knew coming back before we even came here that we had a good race car to unload with. And, uh, you know, to beat Ben and Johnny. And we, we, all, we know those are the guys you have to beat. And, and uh, you know, I've been saying all along we've been, you know, our, our race cars have been equally as good as theirs. Some weeks better, some weeks not as good. And uh, we need to uh, make sure that, that I get the job done. And, and I'm pretty happy with that. And you got to be, you got a sponsor on the side of the car that also sponsors the race as well, SouthernMainMotors.com. So anytime you can deliver a sponsor, Victory Lane, it's a good night. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, and, you know, hopefully uh, if we can win today, maybe we'll sell up a couple cars on, uh, on Monday. That's what they used to say, win on Sunday and sell on Monday, right? But uh, no, congratulations, Lonnie Somerville. And uh, as you move on to Lee and then Oxford, I mean, two other tracks that you, this team and you should run very well at. Yeah, and, and we're obviously going to take the same car, you know, to both of those with the crate motor in it and uh, take the... You know the other car with the, with the big motor to, to Thompson. So uh, we're looking forward to this busy stretch. Uh, you know we've got a lot of depth on our race team and uh, just anxious to get this going. All right, Lonnie. Well, good luck the rest of the way. I appreciate it. Thank you. For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the Southern Maine area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. 
We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Hewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. People will do whatever they gotta do to get to Ossipee Trail Motor Sales, Route 25, Gorham. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Pat Man himself, just letting you know that Pat Man's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Southern Maine Motors, out to be Maine's number one Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep dealership. Don't forget this week, Thursday night, July 14th, the Ike Door Memorial Race. The streets Reese across America. Ike yeah, Dora Reese across race. America. So, uh, you know, up to Speedway 95, get out if you're not going to race, at least go out and support what Chuck's trying to do. And yeah, and... Like he said when he was here, he's paying cash that night. Yeah, cash, baby. Cash, and it's a 1000 yep. to win. And I think he's paying like $20 a lap. So a guy could win each some serious money. Each lap yep. Yeah. So th this past weekend, they had some great racing up there. And congratulations to Andy Saunders, who ended Mike Hopkins' six-race winning streak. You know, So uh, picked up the win in the late model division up there. And then Becky Elston won the Sport 4 she feature. She was a guest co-host on here before. So. Yeah. Congratulations to her. Uncle Wayne's a supporter of the yeah, show. Yeah, Wayne sells pots and stuff like that. Cody Brassbridge, uh, you know, in the Strictly's. And then the sportsman, uh, Steve Moulton, took down the win. And we talked about kids, and there's another kid right there, Ryan Modry, uh, picking up a win up there in, you know, his division there. So, you know, Speedway 95, a lot of things are happening, and uh, we'll be there, you know, Thursday night, July 14th, for the Ike Door the race. Ike Door race. And then the following week, July 21st, the John Fippen Memorial Race. So yep. get out there and support what Dell and Alice are trying to do. So we'll take a break. We're flying right through this week's show. Clark's Car Crushing has been a family-owned and operated business since 1978. We do everything from crushing cars, handling industrial scraps, to buying the scrap metal right out of the back of your pickup. Copper, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, you name it, we'll buy it. We have roll-off containers of all sizes for industrial accounts. We'll handle the legwork with full drop-off and pickup services. So for a professional job, guaranteed honest weights, and top dollar paid statewide, come see the Clark family in Farmingdale, Maine. Clark's Car Crushing. Don't fix it, scrap it. Have a ticket but need a ride? Let VIP take you to the hottest events, including Entertainer of the Year, Taylor Swift, at Gillette Stadium, June 25th and 26th. Or country music superstar and Grammy Award winner, Kenny Chesney, August 27th. And September 25th, don't miss the NASCAR Sylvania Sprint Cup at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Leave the driving to VIP and let VIP take you to the hottest events. Call or reserve online at VIPChartercoaches.com. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Now at three convenient locations. Go to scottsrecreation.com to view our inventory. And there you see some pictures from my little racer up at Richmond Cotting Speedway, and I'll tell you, she gets it done, and thank you for Chris Roy for these photos. And yeah. Why are cart? A cart's pretty sharp looking, right? Yep. Natalie Clone in there owns B&B Racing for Tommy Ricca. Yep. Told her a few weeks ago. You know, I used to come up here last year, and you had the prettiest cat here, and I love to take pictures of you. We now, it, it was Prima Gray. She says, it don't look very pretty, so my kid let me know it. And, uh, you know, so now why it looks so pretty, and thank you to the sponsors that we mentioned earlier. And, you know, these other kids, you'll see these photos, and these kids, they, it's, it's such an exciting time. And I'm telling you, folks, here's your opportunity to come check it out. Because, you know, obviously when you go to Beatridge, Unity, 95, anywhere the night before, you're tapped out on Sunday, right? Right. Well, July 30th, before you go to those other racetracks, come up to Richmond, check the racing out. You're coming as a guest of mine. When you go to the front window, you're telling me you are there 
for Alicia Perry, you're in free of charge. I don't care if every person that watches Mainly Motorsports shows up, they are getting in free of charge because of Alicia Perry. It's a special promotion they got going on that day. Anybody that comes can get in and you know we're going to have a monster truck, Greg Winston back and his monster truck, Cross yeah. Station is going to be there, you see a photo of that there. It's going to be on display for the kids to look at, but any spectator, if you bring a bus load, you're in free. You stop at that gate. You tell them you're there for Alicia Perry. Every person has to say Alicia Perry. Every, Alicia Perry. And, uh, and that's why you're there. Alicia or me, and you'll get in free. So There you go. And that's your opportunity to come to Richmond County. It's usually $10 to get in the pits and everything. It's on the house that day, baby. And Richmond's always a good time. It's fun. I mean, it's like... What we used to do when we all first started racing, yep. it was it yep. was fun. So come up and fruit. see these kids right. on your way to Unity, 95, Beechridge, Oxford, anywhere. Or if you just pick and choose your stuff. Go check them out because they're going to be at the big tracks before it's over with. And it's free. Yep. It's it's on the house. Courtesy of Alicia Perry. Alicia Perry. So make sure you stop at the gate and we'll remind you again. <laughs> Alicia we'll, Perry. <laughs> we'll be right back to wrap this week's show up. Five years ago, I went shopping for my family's first camper. I didn't like the prices and I didn't like the way I was treated. A year later, I opened up Scott's Recreation. Today, Scott's Recreation is Maine's exclusive multi-line Heartland dealer, along with being Maine's number one fifth wheel dealer two years in a row. Browse through the new 2012 Heartland models or take advantage of closeout prices on 2011s. Scott's welcomes almost anything in trade, financing available too. Scott's Recreation, Route 202 in Manchester and their new Turner location on Route 4. At Southern Maine Motors, we're celebrating Jeep's 70th anniversary with our spring event. Get the vehicle you want at a price no one else can touch. Like a 2011 Jeep Compass, leased for only $239 a month for 39 months. Or a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee, leased for only $299 a month. Plus, right now, used car values are at an all-time high. Bring in your own vehicle and drive off in a brand new car. With savings this big, it's no wonder Southern Maine Motors is out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealer. Visit SouthernMainMotors.com. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you this week by LKQ. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Route 202, Gorham. And as we wrap up this week's show, I want to give a shout out to the photographers that really yeah, they help us send us track. photos, anything I need, because I'm a pain right in the, anybody that knows me knows that. So Cheryl and Wiz from CW Photos there, or for, you know, they do a good job. Unity at Speedway 95, they, yep. you know, they take the photos there. Jamie know. Williams for Finish Line Photography, he runs around to all the tracks, plus he's at Beatridge every week. Yeah, and you got Steve and Mike LeClaire that are also at Beatridge. Steve LeClaire, I mean, I don't know how old, he doesn't look his age, but I think Steve LeClaire has got to be 60, 65, because, I mean, he's been doing photos there when it was... Before it he's was not clay. That old, but oh, yeah, I know, but he's been around forever. Yeah. I like to tease him. Then you got Chris Roy. He does a lot of stuff up yeah, Chris, north. Chris RPM sent us the photography. Yeah, yeah, Chris sent us the photos. He's obviously the official track photographer of the the Nelka Legends. Yeah, but he does the. Um, you know, he was the one that sent us the ones for the Richmond cutting, you know. So these these guys do a lot of other yeah, stuff he runs too. Around Steve Leclerc does a lot of other stuff. You know, yeah. the sand drags and stuff, and he's yep. you know. And then uh, Norm Mox, who's the past photographer. Yeah. He uh, he does a lot of stuff and. He does great work and puts it all over the place. He yeah. travels all And then the Bobby Bristol, who started taking some more shots down at Beechridge. So, yep. you know, I really appreciate these guys, uh, you know, what they do. And, and, you know, just helps us be able to put a better product out there for you. And then, you know, a shout out to our sponsors, obviously, SouthernMainMotors.com. LKQ, you'll see on next week's show, you know, highlights from their open house. Award really appreciate champs. award champs. The, the, you know, the uni guys are getting them. The, you know, we do the driver of the months and, you know, all that stuff and really appreciate them. And then Scott's Recreation. I mean, if you've got a camper, go in and see Scott and, you know, anything you need. You know, yeah. I, uh, it's just, I really appreciate And then the scrolls. You see that ticker going across the bottom? Get in, just go in and support. You know, tell the guy the reason you're here is because they support Mainly Motorsports because without any of them, me and Greg wouldn't be here right now. Right, and I got to shout out to Trackside because Spanky hooked me up with a shirt to wear oh, yeah, on the show. Because I won't hook him up. But, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm an animal lover, and I don't want to put another cow through <laughs> what they have to go through to give enough. But I hope you enjoyed this week's show. We had some great racing action, and, you know, next week we're going to have some more fun stuff too. So we'll see you next time on Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check of money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports. 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show.
watching TWC TV, only on Time Warner Cable.